Hello, in this video we will discuss about the mitogen and growth factor uh, cell cycle we will discuss in this video. So first of all you should need to understand the mitotic signaling pathway we are going to understand and the cell differentiation and the cell cycle. So the mito mitogen and growth factor we can understand in this video and the cell cycle also. So let's begin to understand what is the mitogen and what is the growth factor. So the mitogen is the separate thing but it is similar with the growth factor also. But the uh, differentiation is due to the mitogen is a small protein that induces the cell to begin cell division while the growth factor is the naturally occurring substance that is capable of stimulating uh, cell proliferation, wound healing and the cellular differentiation. While if we will discuss about the similarities so the similarity can be um, basically the mitogen can be the endogenous and the exogenous. So the mitogen is the endogenous or exogenous means the endogenous means the within the cell which that stimulate the cell division while the exogenous means the external factor will bind with the receptor to trigger or directly go into the DNA as a steroid for example testosterone. So on the other hand here is the similarities if we will discuss so the both are for cell cycle used for the cell cycle and both can influence checkpoint of the cell cycle and the, both are de deregulation of both can cause cancer. So the excessive amount of the mitogen and the growth factor will lead to cause cancer and both help in the growth of individual throughout the life and the differentiation uh, as well as the developmental time also. So anyhow, uh, I hope you make sense. So here is I'm drawing the cell which that is bind with the mitogen with the mitogen receptor will stimulate the DNA to proliferate and produce the uh, undifferentiate. And in this way the cell cycle will begin. And in this way the cell cycle is the interface. Interface is known as a preparation phase after the cell will prepare itself. And in this way here the G1 phase will be occur. After the G1 phase, basically there are many things. The mitogen growth stimuli will stimulate the cyclin D and the cyclin D, uh, cyclin dependent kinase 4 and 6 uh, will bind with the cyclin D to the mitogen activating kinase enzyme to the G1 phase triggering. And in this way, the cell will uh, condensation of the uh, chromosome as well as the preparation of both and the growth basically the cell will be size will be bigger in the size as compared to the normal and on the other hand the cyclin independent kinase 2 and cyclin E which that is bind also to trigger the G1 phase and in this way here is the protein retinoma retinoblastoma protein will bind with the E2 factor and in this way E2 factor will be inactive but in this way the cycling uh, decrease of the cycling during the cell cycle will trigger and separate after the phosphorylation of the protein retinoma retinoblastoma will bind with the E2F factor will bind with the DNA to transcribe more cycling as well as depend cycling dependent kinase for the uh, progression of the cell uh, cycle and in this way the cell cycle will maintain if the too much cycling and uh, uh, will produce so the E2 factor will be uh, remain bind with the protein retinoma blastoma, retinoblastoma. So here is the cycling A which will bind with a cycling dependent kinase 2 and after this binding it will be S phase after the S phase complete the checkpoint will occur and after this the dissociation will be occur. This dissociation is the cycling A and C. Uh, sorry cyclin A and CDK2 this C CDK2 will be separate and after this complete as phase will progress to the next phase due to the dissociation of this complex maturation promoting complex so this is the maturation promoting complex which that is bound with the cyclin B and cyclin D K1 is the next after the checkpoint so the G1 G2 phase will be occur the growth 2 phase in this way, the S phase, which that is the synthesis phase, will synthesize the DNA to become a double the chromosome number. So the double of the chromosome, the 4-4 chromatin. So the 8 total. 
so the cyclin B will bind with the CDK1 in the G2 phase. After the complete G2 phase, the checkpoint will be occurred to begin an M phase. An M phase is mitotic phase, which that is completely uh, divide cell, the prophase, anaphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and karyokinesis to cytokinesis will begin to complete separation of the cell and it either go as a stem cell to produce more cell or it go into the G0 phase for the rest phase, the quiescent phase. In this way, the differentiation, for example, the nerve cell, hepatocyte, and the pancreatic cell are the gastrointestinal tract cell, epithelial cell, which that will not again divide, but the stem cell will produce more. So here you can see this is the rested cell will can be apoptosis but not divide. So the division of the cell will become uh, will come from the stem cell. So the stem cell is also pro producing by the cell cycle, but the uh, also stem cell will produce the uh, differentiated cell, for example, the special cell. So here is you can see the cyclin E and A will produce if there are less amount of the cyclin the um, cell cycle. So the E two F E two factor will be separate after the phosphorylation of the protein retinoblastoma, while if the excessive amount if the excessive amount of these so the e2 factor will not bind or dp factor will not bind so here is the growth factor will bind with the growth factor receptor will trigger the dna to stimulation and protein can be growth factor can be protein cytokines or steroids so the protein and steroid can be cytokines so it will lead to differentiation and maturation so that is the major part so let's begin to understand a bit more explanation and next uh, after this we will discuss about the cellular pathway the mechanism of the signaling pathway the mitotic signaling pathway so let's begin to understand here is the blood vessel which that is contain a cytokines a growth factor this growth factor will bind with the growth factor receptor after the binding with the growth factor receptor the tissue of the body for example so it will be uh, either go into either either go into the produce more stem cell or the special stem uh, cell special cell can be neuron or other cells the uh, other part of the osteocytes or other cells hepatocyte etc so at the stem cell the proliferation and differentiation will be okay and the, it can be g0 phase if the special cell or stem cell will become again for the proliferation and the cell division and differentiation so the stem cell again will that cycle will be occur but anyhow this was the overview about the mitotic and uh, mitogen and growth factor for uh, importance of the cell cycle so let's begin to understand if the mitogen will bind with the uh, tyrosine receptor kinase receptor that is the mitogen receptor basically and the extracellular domain and intracellular domain is the dimeric type. So the dimeric protein contain will recruit after the bind with the mitogen, the phosphorylation will recruit, recruit the JAK protein and the STAT3 protein. After the binding with the STAT3 protein, the JAK docking with the STAT3 protein and in this way it will be dimerized. The dimerization of the STAT3 and STAT3, the phosphorylased to become a transcription factor will bind with the DNA to translate that to transcribe that gene which that is very important for the cell cell growth and the cell cycle the division of the cell cycle so here is also the jack is also uh, stimu uh, stimulate the activate the ox oxidized to phosphoinositide 3 kinase and this phosphoinositide 3 kinase will activate the AKT so, so AKT will be ox, uh, uh, excited and in this way the uh, necrotic factor kappa B will be excited and in this way the necrotic factor kappa B is used for the inhibition of the cyclin and the growth factor etc 
when bind with the DNA we will discuss later but here is first of all we should need to understand for example the mitochondria will be damaged and other organelle will be damaged to produce the reactive oxygen species it can be converted into the hydrogen peroxide via a peroxidase enzyme and in this way the mitochondria and in this way important thing is that here is a CDC25 will be inhibit because the CDC a gene is basically produced the cyclene B and cyclene A and the CDK2 and CDK2 and CDK2 with cyclene B and cyclene basically used for the G2 phase so the G2 phase will be inhibited if the cell will not correct so on the other hand the uh, and 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 necrotic factor kappa b not uh, he inhibit or not inhibit on the basis of situation so there are many pathway will be inhibit inhibit due to the hydrogen peroxide for the uh, inhibition of the cell cycle while the apoptosis will, be, will begin so the apoptosis will be occur so the apoptotic pathway i am not discussing in this video but later on you can watch my video i have a lot of video about the apoptosis so you can watch that so here is the growth factor if bind that was the mitogen so the growth factor will bind to trigger the jack and start again which that is also trigger the phosphoinositide 3 kinase activation to akt again and in this way the m tor c complex 1 and 2 the mammalian target of rapamycin will be activated after this activation it will be inhibit the autophagy so that is why the autophagy will be inhibit why because the autophagy will lead to degrade the cell or apoptosis so in this way the stat and uh, 3 will be bound with the dna for the um, uh, proliferation of the cell so here is the mtor c1 complex this mtor c1 complex which that is uh, trigger the gene cyclin e and cdk2 also Cyclin E and CDK2 is used for the G1 phase. So the G1 phase will be stopped if the cell will go into the G1 phase. Uh, G1 phase. So that is uh, basically the simply uh, cell will be damaged if so that this will be inhibited. But this mechanism we will discuss later on. So here is the cyclin E and CDK2 will be produced and growth of cell as well as other things which that will be happen. And differentiation and proliferation so here is the g0 to g1 phase is depend to the cycling d1 and cycling cdk4 and 6 and in this way it will trigger the protein retinoblastoma will that activate to uh, e to f factor will be separate after this separation will become more production of the cycling as well as cycling e for g1 to f g1 phase so the G1 phase and cycling E is used for the basically the cycling E is used for the attachment with the CDK2 to progress the growth of cell. So important thing is that the E to F if uh, bind with the protein retinoblastoma if not required so the protein retinoblastoma will not separate due to the cycling D will be separate. So the cycling D and CDK4 and 6 will can be separate these both complex. So here is the uh, another necrotic factor kappa B used for the P21, 27 and 57 protein. This protein will inhibit if the excessive cycling D1 or other cycling. If the excessive cycling will lead to cause cancer. So the cancer causing gene will be cancer causing process can be inhibited through this type of protein p21 and p57 and p20 uh, 20 uh, 55 57 so this all here is the cycling b inhibition after the cycling b inhibition it means the a cycling b will inhibit when so it in this way the cycling b is basically used for the g2 phase while the cycling a will be inhibited to inhibit the uh, S, uh, S phase of the cell cycle while on the other hand here is you can see I can understand as well here the inhibition of the cycling A will inhibit the S phase of the cycling while it, if inhibit the inhibit the cycling B with the CDK1 in this way the G2 phase will be uh, arrest 
and in this way the cell will completely stop and apoptosis will be occur and if the apoptosis will be occur here is the next cycling is used for this so if the apoptosis will be occur so in this way the proliferation uh, of the damaged cell will not occur and the cancer inhibition by this mechanism so thanks for watching please make sure to subscribe